Episode 40, The Nano Ledgers, Back to the Basics. Interested in Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a very vague concept to a lot of people. Need to know more about cryptocurrency? We're going to talk about the basics. You know, this is something that people just have no idea about what crypto is. How about buying, selling, and mining? Tony, I think that's one of the things that's going to make us a little different from some other shows. We're getting our hands dirty. Then listen to Gary Leland and Tony Sakala, better known as the Crypto Cousins, on the Crypto Cousins Podcast. This week's price. Price of Bitcoin, $8,110. That's up $1,327 or 19.5% over the last seven days. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome to the show. Gary Leland here. And this is Tony Sakala. Well, Tony, I enjoyed uh, saying that price a little more this time than I have the last uh, month or so. It's nice to... Be up and be up 19% for the week. Up 19% in one week. Uh, you know, I think in traditional finance, if you're up like what, one or two or 3% over the whole year, people are kind of happy, you know? Yeah, but, but in traditional finance, you don't drop <laughs> you don't drop over 50% in three months. So I'm going I'm to give that's traditional true. finance that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Volatility <laughs> is the uh, name of the game here. Yeah, if it, uh, if, uh, the Dow Jones or NASDAQ and all that drop more like <laughs> probably 70% in uh, four months. I think we would have the second Great Depression. So uh, I'm, I'm giving them that there. But it is nice, much nicer being on the upside than on the downside. And Tony, today is tax day. So April 17th, everybody has to pay do their taxes in the U.S. And, you know, that's really – to me, kind of a good sign because I remember just maybe two, three weeks ago, Tom Lee with Factum Investment Groups, uh, who's a pretty much a Bitcoin bull, said that we were going to be down because of people selling crypto to pay their taxes. Because not only because people owe a lot of taxes, but exchanges owe a lot of taxes, and they keep their money in crypto, not dollars. So they're having to sell off a lot of crypto, according to him, to pay their taxes. So if all this selling's been happening to pay taxes, and we've still been going up, that could be a real positive sign come uh, next week when no one's selling to pay taxes, Tony. You know, I think people want to ascribe real meaning to the price movements, and you know, there are so many forces at play uh, that finding one or two variables, you know, f- makes us feel good. Like we want to say it's this one thing or this one other thing. And I think that that is a good theory that that's a possible, you know, factor in the price going down. And it's good timing that now it's going up. Uh, but there are a lot of other factors, uh, you know, at play here as well. So we'll see, uh, you know, what happens. Yes, we definitely will. I'm curious to see what happens this week myself. Uh, nice article I saw since we're talking about – since we're on this Bitcoin bull feeling this morning. I saw yesterday or Friday Tim Draper. You know, Tim Draper bought all the Bitcoin from the Silk Road auction. He made a pretty penny on that, didn't he? Yeah, he bought uh, – <laughs> yeah, he bought what? 30 – was it 30,000 30, Bitcoin, Bitcoin at 600 each? Mm-hmm. Now they're perfectly eight thousand each, so he made a pretty penny there for like a two-year investment. But he says Bitcoin by the year twenty twenty-two will definitely reach two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a coin. And he's been pretty accurate, hasn't he? Yeah, he was. Uh, he said Bitcoin was going to reach ten thousand by Christmas when it was unthinkable. I don't know when he said it, but it was unthinkable when he said it, and it ended up reaching, what, sixteen, seventeen thousand 17,000 by Christmas. So he said it is – his words on this, Tony, were, they're going to say you're crazy. They're going to say you're nuts, but it's going to happen, and it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So I, I think when someone like him that's pegged it right a couple of times says it, rather than McAfee, who – I like John, but 
people see issues with John sometimes, you know, because he's kind of like off a loose cannon. Yeah, well, yeah, he says very dramatic things. But I think right now we're ahead of the Bitcoin price prediction tracker um, that uh, uh, we're really close to the line. Uh, Bitcoin we're within a prediction. percent, I think. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's supposed to go up uh, and and going up at a logarithmic rate. And the website that we gave a couple of weeks back uh, showing that we're pretty much right on the target. I have that on my a tab on my opening uh, computer screen, so I can check that every morning when I open the computer, just to have my curiosity. So yeah, but it's within a percent. It may be up, maybe down, but it's like right right on line there. And uh, a lot of people were giving that a hard time because it had dropped below the curve. But, yeah, that's going to happen up and down, up and – no one was saying anything when it was way ahead of the curve. <laughs> <laughs> it was way ahead of the curve for a yeah. bit, yes. Yeah. Hey, also, uh, for those who might be interested, we have some uh, more – we've been upgrading our mining machines, and we have some more cards for sale, graphic cards. If anyone's interested in finding out uh, what cards we have, we're not going to go over that all here, but if anyone's interested in finding out what cards we have or the prices or anything, just email the crypto cousins at Gmail or um, send us a Facebook message or whatever, and we'll give you those. We've been selling quite a few of those. Yeah, so I mean, soon, soon as uh, soon as we say that, then a couple of people call us and contact us, and um, so I think we just have a few left. Yeah, so we're almost uh, out of those, but we just still have some. Someone's looking for a good price on some used cards, and then. We just added another machine to turnkeymining.com. That's our mining website. We're kind of like getting our ads out of the way here, guys. So yeah. <laughs> this is the last one, though. But, uh, you know, Tony, the thing about our turnkey mining site is, well, we sell the Ethan Miner on there, for those who don't know. And it's like a plug-and-play miner. You plug it in. It comes all set up. All you do is plug it in, turn it on, and the money starts going to your wallet. You don't have to know anything. It just starts mining crypto and putting it in your wallet for you. Tony does all the work. He's the mad scientist behind that. But the thing about that is, Tony, I think almost every time we put one of those on there, we sell it just like that. I mean, they fly out the door. I mean, it's just a matter of getting cards. Right. The hardware has been hard to get, but the prices have dropped and uh, GPUs are coming back out of the stratosphere. I think we're pretty much out of the danger zone and we're... We're, we've got uh, most GPUs, maybe $100 over manufacturer's retail price, MSRP. So uh, it's come out of the stratosphere now. And uh, I think it's a supply and demand thing. Basically, the the retailers realized that they could sell out of every card that they had in a few minutes. So <laughs> then they, they clamped down on selling it, putting limits of one or limits of two. And then raised the price and saw what happened. I mean, it's good old market forces at work. I mean, what will people pay? What will the market bear? And people would pay, <laughs> you know, twice as much for a card. Well, especially when crypto was uh, going up like it was. I mean, you know, they definitely were paying it for sure. I um, also want to make sure and thank everybody who's joined our Facebook group. If you're not a member of our Facebook group, check that out. Also, check out our YouTube page, CryptoCousins.com uh, slash YouTube. That thing, I looked the other day, that thing's getting off the hook there as far mm -hmm. as people joining. I was, I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't realize how many people we had subscribed to that page. YouTube is great because, you know, uh, when – we, you get a number of videos lined up with the same topic. Then when someone's watching someone else's channel, you know, you're seeing in the sidebar, you know, they're advertising us in the sidebar. So if you're like, oh, what's this crypto cousins, you know, and then they'll click over there. So and also our uh, podcasts are on there, too. If somebody wants to listen, you know, they can even listen to the podcast or watch our videos over there. I got another video to put up this week, as a matter of fact. Um, one of our conversations, number four. But check out our YouTube page. Like I said, at CryptoCousins.com slash YouTube, you might be pleasantly surprised for sure. We got a, kind of a long let's, conversation. Let's go to yeah, uh, we got a, Let's go straight to the phone message. Okay, here's our phone message from Cousin Xavier. Uh, before we go to that, remember this number if you do want to call 747-777-9471. 747-777-9471. As Tony says, with all those sevens, we got to be lucky. But here's, here's a message from Cousin Xavier. Hey guys, it's Xavier Scott calling from West Virginia. Huge fan of the show, and I really like everything that you guys are doing to try to help all of us crypto cousins out there. My call, or my question, I'm sorry, is 
What do you think is truly the driving force behind what allows Bitcoin or crypto's value to go up and down? And how exactly can you explain to our listeners what makes the coin be so volatile while at the same time still constantly gaining value at the end? Um, Thank you for your time and can't wait to hear your response. Thanks, guys. Okay, Tony. So why so volatile? Well, it's just really simple. There's fear and there's greed. And uh, so when people hear that uh, the price is going up and they hear that that they're going to miss out, uh, you know, they don't want to miss out. So you can feel it within you. You're like, oh, wow, I really want this thing. And so people start buying. And why does it drop? Because people are afraid. And so the emotions drive the price a lot. And uh, the sophisticated investors, the people who have do this as a business, they're not subject to those fears. They're going in and buying up large, large quantities of Bitcoin, and then they're going back in and they're selling those large quantities of Bitcoin, driving the price down again, and then they buy it up again. And didn't we hear that, Gary, a couple of weeks ago? Someone was telling us how someone could just do that really easily. Yeah, so it may not sound like much, but if you've got millions of dollars, you can control the price. You can make a ton of money buying $5 million worth of Bitcoins here and selling $5 million worth of Bitcoin here. I was listening to a show yesterday about arbitrage, Tony. And mm-hmm. The guy was talking about he buys Bitcoin like in Korea, South Korea, and then sells it in the U.S. and yeah. makes, a, makes a spread in the middle. How smart is that? I mean, you know, you don't have to ship it. You don't have to go and put it on a tanker. Yeah, and he said he was giving examples. And like one of his worst examples were – his worst example is he wasn't able to sell it immediately. He had to wait three days, and he ended up making 18%. Wow. Yeah, and he was buying tons of Bitcoin to do that. Well, that's all he does it with is Bitcoin. That's the only when he said you could really – that he felt you could do it properly with was Bitcoin. So you got a lot of businesses that are – while there's a lot of people like you and I, Tony, who are holding for the price to go up, basically we're investors, hodlers, whatever. There's a lot of people who don't care. They know that they can make money right now by buying it and selling it, you know, the next day. Mm-hmm. That is one strategy. And there's lots of strategies out there. It really has to go with your temperament. I mean, some people will sit in front of the screen and day trade. They see a price movement and they buy and then they realize later that they can sell maybe 10 minutes later. And, you know, that's really uh, requires nerves of steel. Well, I am not good at trading. I found that out in the stock market a long time ago. So when the crypto market came along, I said, I don't need to lose money again to find <laughs> out I'm not a really good trader. So I'm, that's why I'm a hodler. People go, oh, you trade Bitcoin? I go, no, I just invest. I, I am not <laughs> I am not a trader. I have lost too much money in my life already trading. But thanks for your question, uh, Cousin Xavier. And like I said, if anyone has a question, please send it to us at seven, call us or a comment, uh, 747-777-9471, 747-777-9471. We're going to have to do another one of those shows soon, maybe on our 50th show. Since this is show 40, we could have a question and answer show. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. So uh, – Hey, and Tony, we got BitBlock Boom coming up at bitblockboom.com. You want to give us a uh, clue about that? Well, BitBlock Boom is a great conference for people who want to learn the basics. Like, what is Bitcoin? What What is this all about? Instead of jumping in and starting to invest, maybe the better idea would be to start to understand the technology so you can sort out what's real and what is hype and what is a scam. I mean – There's all of that these days. There's hype, there's scams, and there's this solid technology behind Bitcoin, which has been around for eight years now, or we're approaching 10 years, 2009, January 3rd, 2009, Bitcoin was, was invented. And so we brought in some of the sharpest minds. Uh, in Bitcoin, uh, Pierre Richard's coming in from New York. He and his uh, colleague, Michael Goldstein, are the co-founders of the Satoshi Nakamoto Institute. And uh, they're a very clear voice on Twitter where uh, they help to dispel myths about Bitcoin and other coins. Uh, and we have author uh, Safedine Amos coming in, who's, his book just released, The Bitcoin Standard, is a fascinating read. I'm reading it now on Kindle. Uh, you can get your copy at the conference and get it signed by Safety. It's an amazing book that will open your eyes to what is money 
Uh, he's talking about how money evolved over the years, uh, how people traded, how they – we're talking – we're going back to shells and beads and, and discovering you know, what inflation is like. Even with shells and beads, there were inflationary pressures. And so uh, we're discovering – all these things in this book. And so I'm really excited to meet Safe and uh, talk to him and uh, get him on a panel and to really uh, just sort out what is money because we're rediscovering that it's uh, not <laughs> what we were told it is. Well, actually, it's, I can't wait to hear him talk and to meet him myself. Now, Bitblock Boom is going to be in Irving, Texas. It's right at the airport in Dallas, Fort Worth. In July, what is it, 14th and 15th? 14th and 15th, Saturday and Sunday. So check that out. And we, until the end of the month, we have a special discount. If you use the word cousins when you sign up, you get an extra 20% discount to the end of the month. So at the end of the month, that discount disappears and the prices go up at the end of the month anyway, because they're going to go up every two weeks starting then. So make sure you check out the site by then. But it's two days, great speakers. You don't want to miss it. So check that out. That's a cryptocousins.com event. And if I can throw in one last thing, sure. you know, you're going to learn about masternodes, which is oh, really a huge. I'm glad you huge, mentioned that. I wanted yeah, to. I wanted yeah. to give Casey a shout out. Thanks. Yeah, because Casey's, you know, Casey's our platinum sponsor, and we've learned so much from Casey. Uh, he he runs a business, Crypto Unicorn Money, and uh, helping people to build masternodes. Just like most things in the crypto space, he he has a video showing you how to build a masternode. Now, if you don't want to do it yourself then you can go to his site and uh, work with him on his uh, Discord server, and uh, he'll get you a seat on a masternode uh, of your choosing, and uh, you can make dividends on your crypto. It's a, it's better than mining because you don't have to understand any technology. You just park your coins in a wallet. It's true, and in all openness, we are invested in some uh, nodes. with Just we've bought some seats. We're not – part of his company or anything but we do have money i guess you could say invested in his project i guess i don't know if even that's even right to say but you we're we're participating the idea of master knows exactly yeah we're participating i guess is the way to say it i just like to be open with everybody so but we're not like part owner we like casey we've known him a long time we like what he's doing enough that we joined him uh we got into a node with him i guess is what we're saying mm -hmm. so you want to check out his site, you want to check out his Discord group, and you definitely want to hear him talk. So, and he is our platinum sponsor, and that's, what was it, CryptoUnicornMoney.com? Is yes. that it? Okay. CryptoUnicorn.Money. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I, I wanted to say that, I knew there was something I wanted to say, and I couldn't remember what it was, <laughs> and so I was going to go to the next subject, so thanks very much. I also, before we go uh, on, I want to make sure everybody knows about, if you're listening to this on your phone, or your computer, or wherever, when you get through listening to this, pull up your search window and search 4-Minute Crypto. That's uh, my new daily podcast with one crypto news story every day. So that's another CryptoCousins.com production. So we're trying to get our subscribers up on that. So when you get through with this, look at your phone, hit that magnifying glass. I think if you put in 4 and Minute, it may even come up. You don't even have to type the whole thing and subscribe to this show for daily updates. Or you can just go to 4MinuteCrypto.com slash subscribe, and you can uh, subscribe there however you choose. But it's a video and an audio uh, show coming out, so check You're doing out. a great job, Gary. I'll tell uh, you, it was rough this morning. <laughs> 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 I got that thing up at like 5-something. It was rough this morning. I was, man, that's why I was late getting in here, getting my notes together. Yeah, this was, this, it was rough this morning. I'm trying to get better at it. I'm quicker at it. It's just rough in the morning. To do that. So thank you for the work. Well, you're doing a great job. I mean, for most people, getting up at five is challenge alone. Getting up at five and doing uh, a live broadcast video and overlays and you know all of that. Besides the researching the topic, uh, that's a that's another huge thing, and it's very timely. Uh, I see the topics you picked up on are being covered by uh, some other folks as well that are like, these are the top stories of the day, especially uh, that call by Tim Draper. Yeah, I uh, actually, it it has really, it's really an educational process. Uh, I think after, you know, I think if you take the fact that I got into crypto last September, that I've gained a lot of knowledge about it, that, but if I can produce this show for a year, I am going to like, by doing this show every day for 52 weeks, my consumption of knowledge about crypto is going to just explode, I think. 
Yeah, that's for sure. No one's going to be able to fool you into <laughs> buying, uh, I don't know, some sort of scammy crypto uh, <laughs> in a back alley. I mean, no one's going to be saying anything nuts around <laughs> me and going, oh, yeah, this is the truth. I mean, at least I'll know what's going on in the world. Um, hey, let's let's go to a uh, – let's read a question from uh, Cousin Alex. Cousin Alex like, emailed us. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Gary and Tony, I saw an article about Austin, Texas, was using blockchain to ID homeless and wanted to know if this is the same blockchain they use in Bitcoin and how effective it is to ID someone off the grid in a nice way using blockchain. Well, I don't know how they – how do they do that? How would you ID someone with block? I mean, I know it can be done because they're voting with blockchain like in West Virginia. Um, they're doing some voting or test voting. But – how exactly would you do that? Do you take a picture of them and put it on the block or their thumbprint and put it on the block or do you tattoo them? I mean, how do you do this? Well, you know, I think that this is one of those examples so like the Long Island Tea Company. Which, is Long- that, which was kicked off the NASDAQ <laughs> or whatever. Did you see that? Oh, were they? Yeah, they, I don't know if it was the NASDAQ or the Dow. or They, they were kicked off. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Oh, wow. I'm sorry to put that in there, but I just saw that the other day. See what I'm learning from all this new stuff. <laughs> well, let's get back to the question. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So basically, Long Island Blockchain Company, Long Island Ice Tea Company, and then they turned their name into Long Island Blockchain Company, and then their value went up dramatically. So I think this is sort of the same case. If you want to get it in the news, then you take your Microsoft Excel spreadsheet or your MySQL database, and then you, you know, just turn it into some sort of blockchain and you put the word blockchain in, and then suddenly it's popular and in the news. I don't really understand how using blockchain to ID the homeless makes a lot of sense because this is another example of BS, or I'm just going to say BS, you know, the idea that you can take blockchain and disassociate it from proof of work, disassociate it from being a decentralized uh, ledger, and uh, just make your own private blockchain, just call it blockchain, doesn't make it anything interesting. So uh, that's really my take on it. And I don't think it's interesting. I think it's, uh, uh, I don't really feel that there's any value there. Uh, But that's my viewpoint. Uh, Maybe, maybe there's some sort of way that they're putting these uh, IDs on a blockchain is valuable, but I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I, I don't know what you do with the information. Like I said, I don't understand how you would know this guy over here sleeping under the bridge is this certain guy on the blockchain. I don't understand that part. I mean, unless they're carrying around, I mean, because they're going to, if they lost their card, I mean, if you, gave, if you gave a voter's card to someone, I could see how the blockchain would work on the voting. You know, you have your voter's card. Maybe you can match the number up or something. But some dude just walking down the street who doesn't care, uh, I mean, whether he's in the blockchain or not, I-, I don't understand what use it would be at all. But I imagine that the concept is the same, which is what he's asking, I guess. A blockchain's a blockchain, you know, as to whether it's effective blockchain or useful blockchain or any good. Well, you know, I think the bottom line is uh, that the- – the, the program came about from, uh, you know, to improve the identity services of the homeless population as part of a competitive grant by the Mayor's Challenge Program sponsored by Bloomberg Philanthropies. So there was a grant and Austin, the city of Austin, was um, ultimately awarded $5 million. So, you know, I think – So they got $5 million. So they're making a blockchain. I'll make a blockchain for $5 million. <laughs> I'll make a blockchain for the dogs in Arlington for $5 million. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, and don't get me wrong, I am not calling homeless people dogs. I just was throwing something out there. So I was not implying anything derogatory for people who are down on their luck. But I thought that as soon as I said that. I should have said cats or birds. Or cats, something. cats. Let's yeah. keep track of the cats. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. not being derogatory. I don't even want people thinking. I, I don't even want to get the first email someone thinking I was because I wasn't. You know, I was just, just trying to add a little humor to our uh, – situation there okay well thanks for the question there um cousin alex and if you want to send in a text question just send it to the crypto cousins at gmail.com tony let's get into the subject though for today's show the we're going back to the basics with the nano ledger s explaining that the nano ledger s is a wallet it's a hard wallet 
What's the difference between hard wallet and cold storage? I hear those two terms all the time, Tony. Well, a hard wallet, as a hardware wallet, is a place where you can put your private keys that is separate from your computer or your phone. Your private keys are the most important part of crypto, which is gives you the ability to spend your money. If you don't want to spend, you don't want others spending your crypto, then you want to keep your private keys private. <laughs> Good thing they use the word private. So that's what a hardware wallet does. Cold storage is just the idea that uh, this these private keys are written down somewhere, either on paper or uh, on bits of steel or engraved somewhere, and they're locked away in like a safety mm. deposit box where you're not going to be spending them in any way. So uh, the idea of uh, cold storage could also apply to a nano wallet, but the point of the Ledger Nano and of its uh, competitors is that you actually can go in there, plug it in, and uh, use those private keys actively to spend money when you need to send crypto to an exchange or send crypto to uh, to buy something. Okay, so cold storage is the concept of putting your secret codes somewhere other than online, and Nano is just one type of system for cold storage. Yeah, the Ledger Nano, pretty much like the Trezor, is a uh, small device that uh, has a tiny screen and shows you some uh, questions and answers that let you log in to your wallet, basically, and uh, look at the details. Now, of course, it has to get plugged into a computer because the screen is too small and it really needs something to operate on to show you your balances and to show you how, how things are moving. And so it uses a Chrome app, so you need to boot up Chrome, whether a Mac or PC or uh, Chrome OS will have this Chrome app, which will let you um, see, you know, what the Bitcoin addresses are showing. So I'm not a big fan of that part of it. You know, I thought it would be a little more freestanding, but uh, you do have to use a Chrome app and, you know, who knows how long that'll be supported. Right. Well, the Ledger wallet, if you are interested in looking at them so you can if you're at a computer and you want to like look at them or we're talking about it, you can find them at ledgerwallet.com. I, I, that appears to be their website. And they're 79 euros there. Did mm -hmm. you, and then at Amazon, they're $95. Yeah, uh, the price varies. I mean, when, it, when they're out of stock, the price zooms up to $125, $155. I mean, it varies a lot uh, because they were, really, they were really hard to get around Thanksgiving. <laughs> if you remember, the crypto craze uh, and everybody wanted something. And it's really the first thing that you need to do when you get into crypto is to get yourself a wallet, even before you even get crypto. Because if the first thing you're going to do is to go on Binance or Coinbase to take some fiat money, take your credit card or try to hook up your bank account and buy some crypto, then you're going to um, – need to put it somewhere you're not going to want to keep it on coinbase you're not going to want to keep it on binance uh we know what happens when you keep your money online with someone else bad things happen <laughs> i mean i was there i was there at mount gox i had an account on mount gox the other day i saw my password on mount gox uh in my password uh manager and that was back in 2011 and uh so i don't remember what i had on mount gox i think my memory is um kind of protecting me from how many Bitcoins uh, or fractions of Bitcoins I had on Mt. Gox, but it's gone now. Mt. Gox was hacked. All those Bitcoins was, were drained away. It was probably a good thing you don't remember. You might be really upset yeah. now. But <laughs> also, though, I think people need to be careful, Tony, on getting their Ledger wallet because I saw an article or a story maybe three months ago mm -hmm. about someone who bought a Ledger wallet on eBay from an individual. Oh, and right. It, I remember the story. And then, right, he opened the box and there was a, the 20 words were already written out nicely for him and said, here's your private yeah. keys. Oh, that was bad. And the guy got the wallet and said, oh, my private keys is already here for me. And he put his wallet, his money, crypto on there. And the guy who sold it to him had the, pri had the uh, passwords, basically, and went in and got his uh, crypto. Yeah, yeah that, that was really sad. I mean, that's a great example of. Um, so you've got to be careful where you're buying your device from. You might want to buy it from the manufacturer or make sure it's a legitimate place. You don't want to buy it from some guy in a CD alley, 
you know, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. really, you know, with the potential amount of money to be, I was, because at first I was thinking about that going, oh, well, wouldn't you be able to tell the package was open? But really, with the amount of money you could make, there would be no reason you couldn't afford fifty, a hundred dollars to repackage one treasure. I mean, one ledger. Uh, yeah, I mean, exactly. You yeah, because you're going to make thousands of dollars. I mean, your your markup <laughs> is. You could buy uh, the best shrink wrap machine on the planet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it make it look <laughs> like it's never been opened. So, mm-hmm. uh, so do be careful of that. Another thing I found about the treasure, uh, the ledger. I use the treasure. Tony uses the ledger. So. Uh, they kind of rhyme there, don't they? So you yes. may find me saying the wrong word from time to time. But I was surprised that the the pin was only four digit. Mm-hmm. Um, on the ledger, it's on the treasure. See, I'm messing up again. On the treasure, it's eight digit. So I thought that was a short pin. It um, is a short pin. Um, you know, the thing about the pin is it. Um, if you try and fail, you know, I think it's ten times. You know, you're. It's going to disable itself. So people just can't sit there and work their way up from 000 to 9999, you know, <laughs> and chest everyone out. Okay. And I think the new update to the firmware now allows six digit pins. Six digit pins. Okay. Well, good. I, I was, I just wa- I don't have one. So I watched a YouTube video and I'm just kind of asking questions of you that someone might ask from watching this YouTube video. So, uh, so we know that. Now, Another thing that I saw, it came with the, the 20 recovery word sheet that you write your words on. Mm-hmm. So if your words are written there already, like we just said, <laughs> you're in trouble. Yeah. So it gives you the 20 words in order, and you write those words down in the proper order. Then it makes you go through the system again, and it'll say, what is word number eight? And you have to like use the two buttons to go back and forth and say, word number eight is dinosaur. What's word number 10? Word number 10 is hippo. Or whatever to verify mm-hmm. that you've written them down. I guess they're not taking your word for it, right? You have most good systems will double check and make sure that you've um, ri- written down the words and that you have them separate from the device. And the same thing goes for software wallets and phone wallets. And when you get the C words from the software, uh, they a good system will ask you to at least identify some of the words or sometimes they present all 20 words and then they ask you to drag them onto a screen and sort them out. But on the ledger, again, with these two little buttons, you're just sort of flipping through and uh, choosing the words that, um, you know, which is the right word, which is the 10th word or what have you. The I'm really disappointed by these devices, given that you're paying, you know, $95 uh, that you have to use a Chrome app, uh, that you're reliant on third-party software, uh, on the software. You know, the software is open source. The software that Ledger provides is very robust. But anytime you're going onto the internet to download software, uh, you know, you're taking a little bit of a chance. And you have to be sure that when you download your app or firmware update from uh, Ledger that you're getting the right one. Uh, you know, so there there have been some – and there have been some – Software vulnerabilities, both the Treasure had one uh, and I believe the Ledger had one where um, people could get in if they uh, had physical access to your device. Uh, so these things aren't foolproof. Just don't just take them with you in your laptop bag and think that, uh, you know, everything's going to be fine. If you also, if you're sitting at a coffee shop, uh, I'm, so I go to coffee shops all the time and, um, you know, how easy is it for someone to look over your shoulder and see you entering your pin? I, mean, I think it's pretty easy. Or how easy is it for cameras to pick up what you're typing in oh, or yeah. entering in? Because everywhere you look, there's a security camera and a Starbucks, a security camera and a Whole Foods. I mean, yeah, maybe the CEO of Starbucks and the CEO of Whole Foods is not sitting there looking at the camera. But, I mean, somebody is. And, you know, you're going to have to trust that, uh, you know, typing in your passwords in a public place is uh, – Really, a, a, not a great idea. Uh, I think the treasure has a way of r- randomizing on the screen. Yes. How does that work, Gary? Yeah, well, on the treasure, it's eight digits. And um, on the screen, it's a bigger screen. And it shows you a keyboard, like a 10-key keyboard, like you'd use on an adding machine. But the numbers hmm. are all in random spots. Um. And you have to look at that situation there, that random keyboard or 10 key to know what numbers to put in to where to do them on the board 
I see. So you don't know. When you look at the computer screen, if someone's watching your screen, they cannot see what the numbers are. They just see a 10 key with no Mm -hmm. numbers on it. But you look at uh, where the 1 is, for instance, normally it might be the number 7. I see. see. So So you scramble it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you type them in, but nobody knows what numbers those are. They just see a blank keyboard. Um, But on the uh, recovery sheet, yeah, you know, that's real important, too, for people not to keep that in the same place they, ki- place they keep their ledger. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I talked to someone who said, yeah, I keep my recovery sheet, my ledger and everything in, in my – and it, they had a spot. And I said, in the same place? <laughs> they said, yeah, that way I can get them. I said, <laughs> so if they find your wallet, they've got your access key. Because I, I have mine hidden in two different places in the house that are very far apart. So if you do find one of mine – I can tell you right now, go very far away. <laughs> You'll find the other one. I'll give people that tip. And then I keep a copy in my uh, strong box at the uh, safety deposit box at the bank. You know, so that uh, if something has and my house caught on fire, I wouldn't lose the keys. Speaking of catching on fire, you know, uh, one of the things that I found interesting was, uh, you know, you're writing these words down and you, on a piece of paper, and that's really a very weak link. Uh, Ledger also sells the crypto steel, uh, which is a device that's made of steel, and it lets you put those 20 words in uh, sort of like a typographic system where you slide the letters into this little metal box, and then once it's all lined up properly, you uh, seal up the box and can close it all up, and then your words can withstand the fire. You can throw that whole thing into a fire and then later – your words are still readable. Huh. That's interesting. I have not seen that. I will investigate. And that's called the ledger what? Crypto steel. Crypto steel. I One word. Look. Crypto I steel. Yeah. I saw the crypto steel a while back and uh, I guess they uh, either bought it or they are licensing it from the original guy because he wasn't part of ledger, uh, the guy who made the original crypto steel. Now, I also saw in this video when he started, he had to choose what kind of Bitcoin he wanted to put on the wall, mm, whether the real it was Bitcoin or, or whether, yeah, or Bcash, yeah. And so I thought <laughs> that was kind of weird that I had mm-hmm. to choose what Bitcoin. If I'm some new guy, forget about it. I'm you're going. Gonna, I didn't know there was confused but, from the get go. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know there was but Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was kind of confusing. Um, yeah. that, I, that it asked me to choose what kind of Bitcoin I wanted. Um, there are confusing choices, you know. And then we had Segwit, Segwit addresses. You know, when you <clears> launch, <throat> then they'll say. Uh, do you want to use a regular address or do you want to use a SegWit address? And then right there, most people's heads will just explode. Yeah, I mean, then they're they, gone. Then yeah, they're gone. Yeah. Another thing also I think is a lot of people are confused on Tony because mm-hmm. I hear people say this all the time is they tell me they have their Bitcoin on their wallet. But they don't have their Bitcoin on their wallet. Nobody Bitcoin's has on Bitcoin. the blockchain. Yeah, it's exactly. never. You can't take it off the blockchain, store it somewhere, and then upload it back to the blockchain. You have the private keys on your wallet. It's an important distinction. Yeah. So I, I, I hear people say that all the time, though, and I really think they think they're big. I, I sincerely think they believe their Bitcoin is on that device. Well, like we say, Bitcoin is kind of a vague concept, and that's why we're having the conference. We're bringing in experts from all over the world. Now, here's one last thing I have for you. I saw this one in another video I was watching. I was doing my homework. This guy, this guy, he said, he said that Ledger was one of the best. He wasn't knocking it. He just said the reason he was not happy with it was that the software is located in the app data folder. And that was a problem because anyone could hack into the app data folder. I don't know what that means, nor do I really want to know what it means 100%. But why is that? A, why would that be a problem? Well, you're again, you're running it as a Chrome app. So, uh, you know, you you have to load up Chrome and then you download the app and there's a Bitcoin app and there's an Ethereum app. They're separate. The Bitcoin app handles most of the other coins. The Ethereum app handles something else. And then there's a utility app. That's the third app that helps you load software on and off the device. Now, uh, so this is stored on your computer uh, somewhere in a folder that he's referring to. And so, again, if someone could get into your laptop and uh, swap out the software, then you're in trouble again. So if someone stole your laptop and you didn't have it like a uh, private password on it, because some people just open their laptops and it's ready to go, Tony. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, let's face it. I've seen my wife does that. She just opens her laptop and goes to down. She's not all that mm-hmm. security interested. Mm-hmm. So, well, no, I used to do that not, not that long ago, you know, but uh, when you have uh, client data on and uh, money <laughs> on your laptop, then you definitely want to lock it down with a password. Yeah, so if they do get in there, that could be a problem. So, yeah, so make sure you lock down your pa- your computer, too, is what I'm saying. Not just your wallet, your computer that accesses your wallet, if it has data on it that can help people break into your wallet. So... Um, you know, after watching that video, it looks like it's cheaper, but I think I like the Treasure better than the Ledger. I, don't, I like that I don't download these apps, these Chrome mm-hmm. apps. That looked confusing to me, and it was confusing enough setting up mine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That looked confusing, and I like the way the pa- – everybody who – the thing I, I, I'm not sure, Tony, I didn't see – I never saw anyone entering a password or their PIN – to get into their ledger on their computer. Right, yeah. Do you no, not do you that? Enter, you, it's got two buttons on the device, and you enter the, by clicking buttons on the device. Okay, so you uh, plug in your device to your USB, and then you go to the website or open the app or whatever, mm-hmm. and then you put the you click the password on the device. On the device, it asks you, you know, just you see the first number, you know, it's like I think it starts off with five or something like that, and then left button, the number goes down, right button, the number goes up. Press both buttons, and that means enter. So we're talking very primitive interface <laughs> for ninety five dollars. You have two buttons and a like, I don't know, eighty character uh, LCD screen. Okay. See, on, on the treasure, everything you do, it asks you to confirm yes or no with the two buttons. Mm-hmm. But everything else you do, pretty much, you do on the computer. You know, with your regular computer equipment, it's just it's all hidden because. It's all on the screen that's on the treasure. Right. So right. it's kind of like coded that way. Um, for my big fingers, I like it better. Mm-hmm. No, that makes a lot of sense. Well, you know, and there's, there's, there's two ways of going about it. There's using the interface on the device and using the interface on your computer. And in, in any way you do it, uh, there's going to be some risk. And I think, again, all of these things require a strategy. You know, I wouldn't put everything – into one ledger. Right. right, right. Yeah, even the Vingelvoss twins, I saw a thing about them. They have wallets all over the world. Oh, I would bet so. With, I mean, uh, have, like, I don't know if they got a thousand yeah. Bitcoin in each one or a hundred, but they have them in a lot of locations. It's not even like they not only have multiple wallets, they have multiple wallets in multiple locations. So mm-hmm. it's like if the bank got robbed or something, they're still okay. I mean, uh, I thought that was interesting that they had them in multiple locations. Well, yeah, you wouldn't want to have such a fortune, you know, in one location. It's a big honeypot. Yeah. So that was now. What, tell me about the Ledger Blue. That's new, isn't it? That's a new product that they have come out with, and it's a. I was really excited. It was like, oh wow, look at this! this is a big screen. Uh, and our friend uh, Vosk did a review on it, and. Uh, Miss Vosk had given him a uh, crypto chick, his girlfriend, had given him that for, I think it was Christmas, and he was so excited, and he opened it up, and he was not very happy with the uh, Ledger Blue. It's just exactly the same as the little Ledger with uh, a t- large touch screen, uh, but the software is pretty much the same, and uh, the, the capacity at that time was pretty small. It was like f- f- seven apps, I think you could have on it, seven different uh, coins, and since then uh, they've raised it. I think you can do more coins now, uh, maybe nine or twelve or fifteen. So the uh, Ledger Blue, more money, uh, but same software. I heard they're adding Monero to the Ledger uh-huh, wallet. Uh-huh. That's coming in the future. It's not there yet. I checked this morning. Yeah, I'm ready for that to happen. Anything else you want to go over about uh, the Ledger? For the, I think we t- beat this one up. Right yeah. Now. Okay. <laughs> well, in that case, I hope you've enjoyed today's show. Um, big thanks for subscribing and everyone who's left uh, reviews on iTunes. We always appreciate anyone who can give us a review or a rating on iTunes. Anything you want to say before we get out of here, Tony? Uh, if you want to learn more about hardware wallets, you can go to worldwidewallets.com. That is uh, where we have – outlined and listed uh, software wallets, hardware wallets, and uh, wallets like the 
Ledger, the Treasure, and even the Open Dime, which is a, a wallet that is very simple as a way to put money into a little USB-like credit stick. So just put a plug out there for our site, WorldWideWallets.com. Yeah, that's a good plug. Yeah, that's a good place to shop and find out about wallets. Um, and everybody, remember, give us a call and leave us a question or a comment at 747 747- Seven 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 nine four seven one. We appreciate everybody listening. Love you guys. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Crypto Cousins podcast. Please share this podcast with anyone you know that is interested in cryptocurrency. Your friends can subscribe on iTunes at CryptoCousins.com slash iTunes and on Android at CryptoCousins.com slash play. If you want to know more about Tony or Gary, just go to TonySicala.com or GaryLeland.com. Make sure and join us on the next episode. And thanks for listening. The Crypto Cousins podcast and information in the podcast are not intended as investment advice. Cryptocurrencies are risky. Never invest more than you can afford to lose. Always seek professional advice before making any investment. Investing in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies may present tremendous risks. Please understand that you are using any and all information available on or through the Crypto Cousins podcast at your own risk.